Well, hello there, everybody. I'm Murray Frost, and today we're going to learn how to import and export your 4K footage in Premiere Pro. Okay, so if you've never used 4K in Premiere Pro before, this is usually what it's going to look like. Obviously, if you're using CC or a different version of Premiere Pro, it might be a little different. But anyways, um, maybe you're using uh, Red. Uh, you can use uh, Red's uh, codecs over here. But, you know, we're going to just start off with uh, DSLR because usually that's what people are using. Um, but obviously, this is 1920 by 28 by 1080, 24 frames per second. And we're going to have to change a couple things around. So first thing what we're going to do is going to do 38 by 40 by 2160. Okay, and that's your main uh, project uh, size. Uh, square pixels, obviously, because that's what most cameras are using using these days. Uh, 24 frames per second, um, that's going to be our project. Uh, 48,000 hertz, uh, that's just the usual standard audio that ca cameras are recording these days. Um, and audio samples, that's great. Now, this uh, 1920 by 1080 here is fine. You don't need to change it. This is just a preview. Um, you don't need it in 4K or anything like that, so that's fine. We can just leave it like that. Now, maximum bitrate and maximum render quality, uh, it's, it's usually different every time. So, it also it depends on what camera you're using. Like for the Sony FS7 or something like that, if you're shooting in 10 bit, then I would recommend um, using maximum bit depth. Obviously, you got to make sure you have the space for it, like it says here, and also uh, maximum render quality. Now you get it does take a lot more space, but the reason why I would use it if I'm shooting in 10 bit, not 8 bit, 10 bit, is that if I'm doing coloring or um, grading well I don't want to see the full image in 10 bit so that's the only time I would use it but otherwise I'm gonna leave those unchecked and I can save that as a preset and uh, we'll just call that 30 whoops 38 40 by 2160 uh, let's see 24 frames per second um yeah let's keep it like that that's just a, a, a simple thing but that's essentially 4k all right and it's just going to generate all the subfolders and things like that and it's going to uh, create a custom folder for that preset and we're going to hit ok all right now we've opened our project here in premiere pro and the simple thing to do is just import your footage. I've got a 4K shot over here. And I'm just going to bring it in. And I'm just going to keep the settings the same. I've always made it ask me that question every time just so that I know. But um, I'm just going to keep it like that. But you know, this is a pretty beautiful shot. Look, you can see the Statue of Liberty and the Manhattan Island right there on a, on a golf course. But anyways, so let's just say we have our, our video and actually just to keep it as realistic as possible, I'm just going to add a bunch of different shots here. Let's make it um, 15 minutes, just so you guys can get an idea. And you'll understand why I'm doing this in just a second. Let's make it 15 minutes. Bring it down to right there. Let's just get the out point over there. All right. OK. So we are going to export our media and we're going to export our in to out. Okay, so that's 15 minutes, right? Now we're going to keep it on H.264 because that's a, a, a good compression um, specifically for YouTube and, you know, just in general. Um, but we're going to have to change this to custom. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to make this a little bigger so you can actually see what's going on. And what we're going to do is go into baseline and we're going to make it high, just the profile, um, just a bit of quality. And 5.1 because we're doing in 4K and we've got to change the frame rate to 2397 because that's what my source uh, uh, f footage was. Obviously, if you're doing maybe a, a TV show or something, you might do 30 frames per second or something like that. That's usually how you would do it. Um, but in this example, I'm going to do 23 frames per second. Now, I'm going to render it maximum uh, uh, depth. Just, you know, it, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference, but I like to check it just because I, I like checking boxes. But it also it also can give a better a, a bit depth uh, quality, if that makes any sense. But um, I'm going to go with CBR 
um, and actually I just want to make sure okay so I'm going to do 38 40 by 2160 okay and that's 4k I'm ex exporting in 4k obviously square pixels and uh, CBR so CBR is uh, this is the best quality that you can export from Premiere Pro um, specifically in 4k also 1920 by 2080 as well but uh, the CBR is the best quality you can export in um, because YouTube compresses your your videos um, thankfully it doesn't have um, size limits like Vimeo does but YouTube kind of kind of gets you back if you want to call it by compressing your footage um, and you want to make sure you have the best quality footage uploading to YouTube specifically so I'm going to talk a little bit more about um, other situations but specifically for YouTube I'm going to go a target bitrate of 100 um, that's just the attention to detail it makes when it is rendering out the footage and uh, when it pays attention to the pixels it, for example if this is grass you can see there's grass here and there's some trees over here you want to be careful because if you have a low bit rate or so on you can uh, see a lot of artifacts because of the compression so I like to keep it relatively high 100 is, is pushing it quite a bit but I think it's, it's pretty good um, but the drawback to using CBR is the size the, the video size specifically if it's shooting in 4k as you can see here this is 10 gigabytes almost 11 gigabytes big that is massive and this is 15 minutes just over 15 minutes look at that Imagine if it's a full feature length film, one and a half hours to almost two hours. That would be insane. That's like 50 gigs of, of a, a file size. But, you know, if you've got the space, then I'll recommend it. But, you know, let's say that you have a client and obviously a client is not going to want a 30 gigabyte uh, video. So here's how you can go about that. There's two different options that you can use for your bitrate encoding. So VBR1 pass is great because at different points in the video it needs more processing power for example trees and grass and detailed objects otherwise you're going to get artifacts so vbr1 pass kind of reduces your file size significantly so if i change the target bit rate to 40 because that's its target but then i'm going to make it ma make it, it ugh, i'm going to make its maximum bit rate at 60 so that there's a bit of uh, wiggle room there. So you can already see that it's taken it down to 4.3 gigabytes. That's significantly smaller. However, the problem with one pass, a VBR one pass, is that it goes through the video once and it might not determine correctly how much processing power it needs in a specific part of a video. For example, if you have grass and trees and things like that, it might not encoded correctly um, due to the different amounts of uh, processing power that's needed for the video so what I would do is use VBR 2 pass now what it does is it goes through once analyzes the video and it determines where it needs to increase the processing power in order to encode it correctly now this does take twice as long to render but it does make your file size a lot smaller as you can see here 4.3 VBR1 pass and VBR2 pass, they're generally going to be the same size, same size, but with 2 pass, you won't have terrible um, encoding and stuff like that in certain parts of the video as opposed to 1 pass. I think that's pretty good. Render at maximum depth and maximum render quality just because I like checking boxes. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, you can also save this preset as well. So just save it, name it whatever you want and you're good to go so i hope that was helpful guys if you enjoyed tutorials like this i do photoshop premiere pro uh, after effects and filmmaking in general consider subscribing and remember learn film repeat and until next time keep smiling keep shooting yeah.